Today is July 17th, 2024. My name is Nicodemus and welcome back to the Disruptive Technologies Podcast. In today's episode, we'll investigate several compelling stories shaping the worlds of artificial intelligence and cryptocurrency. From Craig Wright's fraudulent claims to Donald Trump's surprising moves in the NFT space, we're going to cover it all. We'll also explore Elon Musk's HQ move, Anthropic's Android announcement, and much more. So buckle up, because it's going to be a time. Craig Wright is an Australian computer scientist. He is not Satoshi Nakamoto. In fact, Craig Wright has been ordered to declare on his website and other places that he's not Satoshi Nakamoto. This legal notice must remain on his site for six months. It states that Wright lied repeatedly in court, claiming to be Satoshi Nakamoto and that he forged documents on a large scale. The notice links to the full judgment and its appendix details those forged documents. This notice is part of a dissemination order by UK Judge James Miller. The case was brought by the Crypto Open Patent Alliance, or COPA. They're a group that represents Bitcoin developers. Industry figures like Jack Dorsey and Coinbase back COPA. They sued Wright in 2021 to prevent him from claiming the copyright of the Bitcoin white paper and suing critics under the pretense of being Nakamoto. Earlier this year, Judge Miller ruled that Wright was not the creator of Bitcoin. He declared Wright lied throughout the trial and forged evidence. On Tuesday, Miller issued a final judgment referring Wright and his witness, Stephen Matthews, to UK prosecutors for potential perjury charges. Wright must also post the notice on his X account and Slack channels. At the time of writing, Wright has updated his Twitter account with the required notice. It's his pin post, so you can check that out if you like. His latest post before that, from May 20th, states his intent to appeal the decision. Despite Wright's claims on social media, Miller noted that Wright has made no formal application for permission to appeal. Copa's lawsuit was intended to stop Wright from claiming the copyright of the Bitcoin white paper and suing developers. Wright's got a bit of a history using the UK courts to silence critics and disrupt cryptocurrency development. Originally from Australia, Wright moved to London in 2015. He filed several libel lawsuits, including one against Bitcoin investor Roger Veer and podcaster Peter McCormick. Wright was awarded one British pound in damages from McCormick. In addition to the defamation suits, Wright targeted Bitcoin developers and crypto exchanges with legal threats. Miller granted an injunction to prevent Wright from pursuing further court cases claiming to be Nakamoto. However, the judge did not prevent Wright from publicly saying that he's Nakamoto, which seems like an oversight to me, but then again, I'm no judge. Wright's assets are worth $7.6 million. They were frozen to cover COPA's trial costs. A UK court also froze $2 million of its assets in the McCormick case. COPA sought 85% of its cost from Wright, that's nearly 6 million pounds. Miller agreed that 85% was appropriate and also ordered Coinbase to be paid 85% of their costs. Again, I differ with the judge on this one. Wright sought to bully and terrorize innocent people. He should have been ordered to pay 125% of the cost of court. All in all, Wright's claims of being Bitcoin's creator have been thoroughly discredited. COPA's legal actions have stopped his false claims and protected the Bitcoin community from further harm. Donald Trump's chances of retaking the White House have hit a new high. This follows his choice of Senator J.D. Vance from Ohio as his running mate. Polymarket is a crypto-based prediction platform. On Polymarket, the Yes shares for Trump were trading at 72 cents. That indicates a 72% chance of victory for Trump. Each share pays $1 if Trump wins, and bets are placed using USDC. Vance is 39. That makes him the first millennial on a major party ticket. He's also a strong supporter of cryptocurrency. Trump's announcement came shortly after surviving an assassination attempt at a rally in Pennsylvania. The incident boosted his image, especially against the backdrop of concerns about Joe Biden's age. A record $262 million have been staked on Polymarket's presidential election contract. The platform has grown popular, despite being restricted in the U.S. due to regulatory issues. Another betting site, Predicted, shows a similar trend, with Trump shares rising from 60 to 69 cents. In prediction markets, people bet on real-world outcomes. Proponents say that this leads to accurate predictions. Critics say it is gambling, but supporters argue that the financial stake ensures careful research and honest opinions. Trump is also planning to release a fourth NFT collection. His previous collection sold out quickly. In an interview with Bloomberg Businessweek, Trump said that demand for his NFTs remains high. His campaign also started accepting crypto donations. In the last quarter, $3 million of the $333 million raised was in crypto. Other major crypto figures, such as Kraken co-founder Jesse Powell and Gemini co-founders Tyler and Cameron Winklevoss, are backing Trump. They've donated to Trump's campaign and the related PACs. Even Elon Musk has shown support, although he denies reports of donating $45 million per month. After the assassination attempt, Musk publicly endorsed Trump on social media. 
The crypto community's support is growing, with many believing in Trump's vision for the U.S. crypto industry. Trump has shifted from being a crypto skeptic to an advocate. He now sees crypto as crucial to prevent China from dominating the market. An elite group of venture capitalists and tech executives have also contributed to Trump's campaign. The Winklevoss twins alone have donated millions. The support from these high-profile figures signifies the strong alliance between Trump and the crypto industry. This backing, combined with Trump's recent boost in the polls, positions him well for the upcoming election. Speaking of polymarket, it's quickly becoming the top blockchain-based betting market. Axios reported that Nate Silver, a well-known statistician and election commentator, has joined as an advisor. Prediction markets are gaining traction as users put more money behind their votes, theoretically reducing biases. Founded in 2020, Polymarket is famous for betting on U.S. elections. Trump often shares his Polymarket favorability on Truth Social. Polymarket predicted Trump would choose J.D. Vance as his running mate, and sure enough he did. Polymarket was founded by Shane Coplin. He raised $70 million, including from Peter Thiel's Founders Fund. In 2024 alone, it's seen over $400 million in trades. However, like I mentioned, U.S. users are restricted from participating in elections predictions due to Commodity Futures Trading Commission's regulations on binary markets, which means unless U.S. users are using VPN or something similar to bypass those restrictions, the results on Polymarket might not be reflective of the opinion of the American voter. Nate Silver is renowned for accurately forecasting the 2008 U.S. presidential elections. He believes the investor class will increasingly use betting markets to predict future outcomes. Polymarket continues to shape how people engage with election predictions and betting. Ripple donated $1 million to the Commonwealth Unity Fund. That's a super PAC that's supporting John Deaton's campaign in the Massachusetts Republican senatorial primary. Deaton is running against Democratic Senator Elizabeth Warren, and she's known to be a crypto opponent. In contrast, Deaton is a lawyer well known for his support of Ripple Labs. He also represents victims of mesothelioma and owns the website CryptoLaw. Now, Ripple backs its own, with Deaton leading the XRP army, which helped in the SEC's lawsuit against Ripple. He also submitted many amicus curiae letters in high-profile SEC cases involving crypto firms. Lawyer James Murphy created the Commonwealth Unity Fund specifically to support Deaton. The PAC has received $1 million from Ripple Labs and $50,000 from Murphy. It has spent $30,000 opposing Warren. Now, despite Deaton not mentioning crypto in his campaign launch and his campaign website only indirectly referring to it, his support has grown. Open Secrets shows Deaton's campaign has raised $1.7 million. Key crypto figures like the Winklevoss twins, Chris Larson, Anthony Scaramucci, Brad Garlinghouse, and Jesse Powell have also contributed. However, support within the crypto community is not universal. The Fair Shake and Sentinel Action Funds have not supported Deaton, and Stand With Crypto, which is backed by Coinbase, has not endorsed him. Pro-crypto Senator Cynthia Lemus has endorsed Ian Kane, who co-founded Cubic Labs and is running against Deaton. Another candidate, Robert Antonellis, is also competing. Now, despite these efforts, polling shows Warren has overwhelming support in the race. Jack Dorsey's fintech company Block is partnering with MoonPay to let its users buy Bitcoin with debit and credit cards, bank transfers, Apple Pay, Google Pay, and PayPal. This integration is for BitKey. Now, BitKey is a new hardware wallet that was launched in March. Block also owns Square and Cash App. The collaboration began as BitKey expanded its market presence. The integration took a few weeks, and MoonPay now powers BitKey users' engagement with Bitcoin. Previously, BitKey had options to buy Bitcoin, but the entire purchase process is now within the BitKey app. While the Bitcoin is coming from MoonPay, the entire thing is handled in the BitKey app. MoonPay operates in over 180 countries and allows purchases of up to $10,000. Users registered with MoonPay have secure, stored payment methods. Thomas Templeton is from Proto, and Proto is developing BitKey. Templeton said that they intend to help the next 100 million people own and manage their Bitcoin with quality partners. The company is also planning to integrate MoonPay sell into BitKey for crypto to fiat exchanges soon. This feature is live with many partners and will launch with BitKey later this year. BitKey is a self-custody wallet that competes with Ledger and Trezor. It offers a 2 of 3 multi-sig setup, eliminating the need for passwords, seed phrases, and recovery tools. Now, to be sure, Block is not the only company looking to make crypto buying easier. Stripe has also expanded its crypto integration into Europe. Shoppers can now buy cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Ether, and Solana using credit or debit cards. Stripe was founded by the Collison brothers. The company plans to make digital asset transactions easier. Online vendors using Stripe can add a crypto purchasing widget to their sites. The widget also manages charges, disputes, and KYC compliance. Stripe's head of crypto is John Egan. 
Egan mentioned that this expansion helps European consumers buy cryptocurrencies quickly. With Stripe's on-ramp, merchants can now reach a global audience, focusing on conversion optimization, identity verification, and fraud prevention. This allows them to grow their business and better assist their customers. This follows Stripe's April announcement to enable USDC stablecoin payments for transactions. Recently, Stripe partnered with Coinbase to incorporate the crypto exchange's Layer 2 network, Base, into its crypto payout products. Elon Musk announced that he's moving the headquarters of X and SpaceX from California to Texas. The decision follows Governor Gavin Newsom's passage of Bill AB 1955, which Musk criticizes as anti-family. Musk also cited California's hostile regulatory environment for the relocation. The X headquarters will move to Austin, Texas, and the SpaceX headquarters will move to Starbase, Texas. Musk expressed frustration with California, mentioning the dangers he faced at just getting in and out of the building due to violent drug addicts. He also criticized Bill AB 1955, which he claims would prevent schools from notifying parents if their child identifies as transgender. Musk warned Governor Newsom a year ago that laws like this will drive families and companies away to protect their children. Musk is well known for supporting cryptocurrencies, which also face California's strict financial regulations. In 2023, Newsom signed the Digital Financial Assets Law, which imposes strict reporting requirements and demands a special license for some crypto activities. Effective in 2025, the law requires license holders to maintain business records and sensitive data for five years. To his credit, Newsom did decline a similar bill in 2022, stating that it failed to create effective regulations for the evolving digital landscape. Now, we were just talking about Ripple a bit ago. A California judge recently allowed a lawsuit accusing Ripple of selling unregistered securities, leaving it to a jury to decide if Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse made misleading statements in 2017 about Ripple while selling his bags. Musk's move does a good job of emphasizing his dissatisfaction with California's regulatory and legal environment. Andre Carpathia is Tesla's former AI director and an OpenAI co-founder. He's launching something called Eureka Labs. This startup intends to create AI-native schools. Eureka will use generative AI to develop virtual teaching assistants. These assistants will bring top courses to more students while maintaining personalized interactions. Eureka plans to make elite educators and coursework available around the world, breaking barriers like geography and language. Carpathy noted that while passionate and skilled teachers are scarce, generative AI can make this level of education available to all. Eureka's first course is LLM 101N. This course will teach students to train in AI similar to the AI teaching assistant. The course includes online materials and digital and physical cohorts, allowing students to learn in small groups. The AI teaching assistant supports the teacher, guiding students through the course materials. Carpathy has been at the forefront of AI developing Tesla's Autopilot and co-founding OpenAI, where he specialized in deep learning and computer vision. He believes that Eureka Labs will make learning anything easy for anyone, expanding both the reach and extent of education. Eureka Labs represents a major shift in education. It leverages AI to provide personalized, high-quality education to students on a global scale. This approach intends to revolutionize how we learn and who can access top-tier educational resources. Anthropic has launched its Cloud Mobile app for Android users. This follows the app's iOS release in May. Cloud supports multi-platform use, allowing users to continue conversations across the web, iOS, and Android. The app includes vision capabilities, which means users can take pictures or upload files for real-time image analysis. Anthropic emphasized Cloud's versatility. Users can draft business proposals, translate menus, brainstorm gift ideas, or compose speeches. That said, political campaigns are not allowed to use Cloud. The Android app adds to the growing number of AI tools available on smartphones. Following ChatGPT's surge last year, OpenAI released its iOS app in May and its Android app in July. Microsoft's Copilot AI also launched on Android and iOS in December. Meta integrated AI into its Instagram, WhatsApp, and Facebook Messenger. Google included Gemini AI in workspace tools, but has not released a dedicated app. Claude's new features include multilingual processing for language translation and advanced reasoning for research and problem solving. In September, Anthropic launched Claude Pro, a subscription version of the AI model similar to ChatGPT+, costs 20 bucks a month. Aether reported $36 million in revenue over the past year, with a 10% month-on-month growth rate. The demand for AI, cloud gaming, and edge computing power is driving the growth. Aether claims to be the world's only enterprise-grade GPU-as-a-service decentralized network, offering services up to 60% cheaper than competitors like Amazon Web Services by using distributed infrastructure with idle GPUs. 
Aether sources its GPU capacity from top-tier data centers, ensuring a 99.982% uptime. Their network supports various projects, including Tensor Opera AI, which trained a massive AI model using Aether's power, and game development platforms like Sequence and GameSwift. The Aether network also launched the A-Phone on the Solana chain, upgrading outdated smartphones with newer on-chain services for $20 a year. Their testnet hosted half a million users and gained support from major companies like NVIDIA and Foxconn in a $146 million node sale. The network launched on the Ethereum mainnet on June 12th. Aether's native coin operates on Ethereum for staking and Arbitrum for payments and rewards. With a total supply of 42 billion tokens, each token was valued at 7.5 cents each. Aether is now preparing for the mainnet launch of its network protocol, integrating its software with Ethereum and Arbitrum contracts. So, what happened? Today we examine the latest twist in the story of Craig Wright. He has been legally compelled to publicly declare that he is not Bitcoin's creator. We also discuss Donald Trump's calculated moves, including his NFT plans and rising odds in the 2024 presidential race, especially following his choice of J.D. Vance as his running mate. We looked at Polymarket's impressive growth and role in shaping political predictions. Additionally, we covered Ripple's financial backing of John Deaton in the Massachusetts senatorial primary, intending to challenge Elizabeth Warren's anti-crypto stance. We showcased the innovative partnership between Block's BitKey wallet and MoonPay, enhancing Bitcoin accessibility. Stripe's expansion into the European crypto market and Elon Musk's major decision to move his headquarters from California to Texas also made headlines. Lastly, we explored Andre Carpathy's ambitious AI-driven educational startup, Anthropic's Claude AI for Android, and Aether's advancements in AI, cloud computing, and edge computing. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Disruptive Technologies Podcast. We'll see you next time.